the last geometric application we're going to see for integrals here is to find the surface area of an object. And specifically, we're going to look at objects like this one that are rotationally symmetric. So these are the same kind of things we dealt with with volumes using disks and washers. The same kind of objects are the ones that we can find the surface area for. Surface area in general is a more complicated topic that you may talk about a little bit in Calc 3, but we can deal with relatively simple ones that have this nice symmetry to work with. So imagine something like a vase that has this rotational symmetry similar to the ones that we've talked about before. To figure out how to calculate surface area, let's back up and think about a really simple example. And so the simple version is something like this, a tube that has a consistent radius all the way through. So like a cardboard tube that we want to find the surface area of. And we've done something like this before. When we use shells to calculate the volume of some object, we use this trick of slicing the thing and unrolling it to observe its geometry. In that case, we were interested in the volume of the shell. In this case, we're interested in surface area, which starts out the same way. If we unroll this cardboard tube, we get a rectangular sheet like this one. And if we know the area of this sheet, that's the same area as the surface of this tube. So to know the area of a rectangle, all we need is the length and the width. So let's call this the length. And then the width, we really want to tie back to the original dimensions of the tube. So just like we saw before with shells, the width here is the circumference of this tube. And that just means we need to know what circumference is, and that's 2 pi r. 2 pi times the radius of that original tube. So if we know the original length of the tube and its radius, we can calculate its surface area by multiplying 2 pi times the radius times length. Okay, so how can we use that on the more complicated version up above? Well, similarly, we can talk about the radius of this object. Now this is a changing radius, but that's going to be equal to whatever the function is. As long as we're revolving around the x-axis, the height of the function is the same as the radius. Because as we have saw with disks and washers, the radius is just the distance between the center of rotation and the outer edge. For surface area, we're not going to do anything complicated like revolving around other lines or tilting them and revolving the other direction. We're going to keep it relatively simple here, so the radius will just equal the function itself. Then, for the length, here, with a simple tube, we could measure the length pretty easily by just measuring the distance between one end and the other. But with a curved shape like the one above, it turns out the length we actually want is the arc length. We actually want the length of this whole curve not just the end-to-end -end distance. So without going into a lot of derivation of why this works, we can just use this analogy of the really simple case to the more complicated case to see that surface area is going to be the same thing, 2 pi times r times l, but for r we'll use the function f of x, and for l we'll use the integral that describes arc length. This means that the formula for surface area look something like this. The surface area will equal an integral of 2 pi times r, which is the function f of x, and then l involves this square root of 1 plus the derivative of f of x squared. So that's the surface area formula. Another formula that we'll use, and we'll see an example in a second using this formula, so every one of these problems, you just plug the function you have into this formula. And again, if it's one that you're going to do by hand, the function needs to be a pretty simple one. More likely, you'll use your calculator to approximate the answer. And you'll see some of each on the homework. But when it comes to memorizing this formula, it's helpful to recognize that it's really just 
2 pi r l, and r is f of x, and l uses the part of the arc length formula. And if you recognize that, it makes keeping track of this formula a lot easier to work with. Let's try an example. For example, let's revolve the function f of x equals 3 square root of x about the x-axis from x equals 1 to x equals 4. And we want to find the surface area of the object that results from that. Just to give you a brief sense of what this looks like, 3 square root of x looks more or less like this, the upper half of a parabola. And then if we revolve that around the x-axis, we get something like this bowl shape on its side. Specifically, we're starting at 1 and going to 4. So here's x equals 1, and here's x equals 4. So we're looking for this surface area on the outside here. Okay, so all we need to do is plug that into the formula. We have the integral of 2 pi times our function, 3 square root of x, times the square root of 1 plus its derivative squared. So we need the derivative of 3 square root of x. Let's pause and do that on the side here. If f of x equals 3 square root of x, that's the same as 3x to the 1 half. So the derivative would be 3 times 1 half times x to the negative 1 half, which we could rewrite as 3 over 2 square root of x. So now we can fill that in in our formula. And the limits of integration are from 1 to 4. At this point, the problem is completely set up, and it's just a matter of integrating and doing some simplification. So let's pull some pieces out of the integral. Let's take the 2 pi and the 3 and move them out in front. Then we have the square root of x times. Then we can simplify here in parentheses. If we square 3 over 2 root x, we'll get 9 over 4x. And now, let's combine those two square roots. So we can multiply and distribute the x through. So we get x plus 9 over 4. At that point, the integral is pretty straightforward. We can do a quick u substitution. u equals x plus 9 over 4. du just equals dx. Then the integral of the square root of u du would be two-thirds u to the three-halves. So in this case we get 6 pi times two-thirds x plus 9 over 4 to the three-halves from 1 to 4. And then we can plug in those limits of integration and simplify a little bit. 6 pi times two-thirds is 4 pi. And then I'll skip a step here and just show you after plugging in the limits of integration and doing a little bit of simplification, there's your answer. And of course you could use a calculator to get an approximate value, but we're not so much interested in the numerical value of the answer. We're more interested in the process, being able to set it up and integrate. So like we saw with arc length, it's very easy to write down functions that we cannot integrate by hand in this way but we showed in that example how to use the calculator, and you may need to do that on some homework examples. So surface area, like arc length, is really just a matter of applying the formula, so there's not a lot of tricky things you're going to run across in the surface area problems.